Today on Real Life, Tunch Ilkin and other Steeler greats share their stories of faith on Real Life Today. Tom McGuff from the Pittsburgh Faith and Family Channel has exciting news. And the Hard Questions panel gives biblical insight to tough questions. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black with my host, co-host, Amy Schaefer. Yes, nice I, to be here. It's good to, ha it's good to be with you. I always look forward to our times together. It is, it's lovely. It's a God. lovely season. <laughs> it's a lovely season. <laughs> well, we, we uh, I, you know why I like... Uh, coming here on Thursdays yes. is our ability to talk about what's going on in life. Yeah. You know, just to kind of touch base. And I, I appreciate you being able to see so you pastor a church. You're yes. Buck pastor a church. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and it's it's a, it's 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 so sacrificial for you to come and be a, on this program because I know you got a bunch of much of stuff to do. Yeah. But thank you for doing that. Yeah. Well, I think it's a it's a high honor, and I love the vision and the mission of Cornerstone Television. I love. I, I'm, I'm, my heart is swelling for the people that are watching and our viewers. I, I, I love them. I think about them and pray for them. And I know that they're watching. And I pray that one thing or one thought would just pierce their soul and, and help keep them going and moving forward with God. That's that, what it's all about. Well, that's the whole purpose for why we do real life. Yeah. Is so that we can be a conduit Yes. Of the Holy Spirit, right? That the con that the Holy Spirit would flow through us, not just you and I, but all of our guests and mm -hmm. all of our musicians, and the teaching of the Word, and that He would anoint that and bring it into your life, and use His Word, His Spirit, to touch you. Yeah. Because right. God loves you so much. That's right. And we love you, and we want to see you take that next step of obedience in following after God's call for your life. You know, Amy, everybody has a divine destiny and purpose. Absolutely. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And man, God has crowned us with his dignity and his worth. He's given us purpose and hope and a bright future. And we pray that you tap into that divine destiny that's on the inside of you. That's what we want for you. We don't want just average or barely get by. We want our, our people and, and, and us to live over the top, abundant, productive, mm -hmm. happy, God-filled lives. As, as I've said before, I've, I had the privilege of working with Dr. Charles Stanley for nine years, and he would often say that we don't want to have a settled for, mm, and he'd yes, use this amen. term, the if Ida life. Right, right. You know, the uh, yeah. if I'd a life, yeah. if I'd only had right. done this, or if I only had mm -hmm. done that. God doesn't want us to live that kind of a compromised right. place. And it doesn't matter. Here's the, here's, here's the good news. What a coulda, shoulda life. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter what you did in the past that wasn't the right thing to do. Right. You can have complete forgiveness. Amen. You can leave that behind. And the beauty of the Lord yeah. is his ability to restore. Yes. Ah, oh, he makes all things new. He does. And he has a way of turning that which was bad turning it into something good and working it out for your benefit and your good in life. This I'm is, a product of that. And I am too. Thank God for his, uh, his, his willingness. And I just prayed this yeah. this morning coming in, his yes. willingness yes. to allow us to try again. Thank you, Lord. He has plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, whatever it takes to get us to our final destination. He's going to do it. He's going to take us to home. If, if we're willing to listen, now, Amy, we got to listen to the Lord. We have right. to walk in obedience. Right, right. He, he is a God that's righteous and just. So we have to listen and be obedient to him. And you're going to find the secrets of right. God in his word. Go to his word. Go find a church that you can be involved with. If you can't get to a church, then, you know, call us and we want to pray. We will stand in agreement with you. God loves you. He's going to take you to a place that you can't even imagine. Right. And just reach out to him. This is for somebody special today. Mm -hmm. This is a word for, for you. Mm -hmm. This is a word for you. So don't let, don't let it pass by. Take this opportunity to reach out and say, now is my new day. Yeah. 
Today Amen. is the day. Yes. A new day yep. in my life that I might walk in obedience and be pleasing to God. Right. Forgive yourself, throw away the past, and walk forward into God's plan for your life. It's gonna, it's gonna, it, it'll amaze you. And he that has ears to hear, let's hear what the Spirit of God is saying Amen. to us, Amen. even through this program, through these little vessels. And if, if you need prayer, our prayer team's there. We would love to connect with you and pray for you. And we want to see that you make it and overcome 888-665-4483. All right, are you ready for some music? Well, before we go to the music, I'm gonna, I, I want to say this. Don't go anywhere. Continue to watch this program. Oh, yes. We have a special lineup of guests that you're right. going to be blessed with. If you like football, <laughs> you might be one of those. I'm not very few people here in Pittsburgh do like Steeler if you don't football. Like football, <laughs> we will pray for you. You need you, to call our number now because we're at pray for you that you like football. We want you to stay tuned because we've got some men of God who played on the on the field and we're going to talk to them about their relationship with God and their ministry here in this area. And we've got a wonderful announcement for you. If you don't know about this new ministry opportunity that God's doing through Cornerstone, you want to stay tuned. So now let's go to the music. Big day. Big day. So let's start off Grace Church Worship Team from Dumfries, Virginia. I run to you. When I'm not sure what to say When I don't know just how to pray Of this one thing I am sure In you I am secure so I'll run to you And I'll run into you
you know, I, I want to challenge you to, when music like that's playing, I want to thank uh, Grace Church Worship's team, but enter into praise and worship. Don't be a spectator. Be a participant. Raise your hands. Ask the Spirit to, to join you there in your living room, wherever you are, and God will meet you there in a very special way. So that's what Cornerstone in real life is about, is bringing you the opportunity of connecting to God. So that kind of opportunity is there. And I also want to just, it's now time for God's Word for real life. So this is an opportunity to connect to the Word of God. Let's read from Malachi, the fourth chapter, the second verse. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. Hallelujah. And you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You know, I love to go outside and sit in the sun's warm rays and feel it just warm my body. It brightens my day and gives me a little bit of vitamin D. We're not getting much of that this time of the year, but it, it, it's a time for just getting in front of the Lord out in nature. Jesus is the son of righteousness. He rises every day with new life. He heals our bodies. He heals our spirits and our minds and helps us to grow up into the body of Christ. We are the righteousness. You are the righteousness of God in Christ forevermore. Hallelujah. That's God's word for real life. Last week, we had a great group of guys with Hearts for Jesus join us to talk about an upcoming event in Pittsburgh called For Men Only. Tunch Ilkin, J.T. Thomas, Arthur Motes, and Bill Stern are here to share more about being on Jesus' team on this week's Real Life. And since this is for men's o men only, take it away, Don. <laughs> Well, you know, Amy's always welcome, right. Right. but not to the men's only event. Right. This is this is the men's only time when when we get together and we kind of can be transparent mm. and learn. Tell tell us a little bit more about men's only. For you men's know, only. Uh, it, it, Don, this event uh, is actually Bill Stern's vision, and it was uh, it started back in the '90s. And the original one was with Rosie Greer, John Kolb, and, and, and myself. And then we did a, a couple more, uh, a couple more after that. And it kind of lay dormant for a while. And then uh, Bill calls me up two years ago, and he says, "Man, I want to." kind of like, I want to get the band back together. I want, I want, I want to get uh, uh, For Men Only back together again. And he and his buddy, uh, and of course, Bill's the, uh, uh, the men's pastor at Covenant Church. And so we started talking. We met for coffee and with Jarrell Gilliam, uh, who was uh, part of Promise Keepers. And we started this uh, event uh, three years ago, or and this, is our, this is our third one coming up, and JT's going to be there, and Arthur Motes is going to be there, and, and Will Allen's going to be there, and, and, uh, Will, and Calvin Beecham is going to be there. And it's just about, you know, there's going to be music, uh, the apologetics are there this year, and there's going to be music, there's going to be drama, there's going to be testimony, uh, it's, you know, and... Most importantly, for because Wolf is going to co MC it with me, Craig oh, Wolfley. Oh, okay. And, the, you know, he's the most famous eater in Pittsburgh, you know. Uh, <laughs> we're going to do tailgating, and, yeah. uh, and uh, that's always a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, for those who are watching that perhaps are new to Pittsburgh, tell us about you guys' careers, your football career. Where'd you play? How long did you play there? Well, I was with the Steelers for 13 years, and then a year with Green Bay, my last year, 1993. And I went. Uh, uh, went to school at Indiana State University in Terre Haute, Indiana, and uh, was uh, born in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, uh, immigrated to the States when I was two years old with my mom and dad, and uh, grew up a Muslim. And but it was here, thanks to guys like JT and John Kolb and Mike Webster and Donnie Shell, uh, won my time in Steel with the Steelers. That's where I met Jesus. As, so, as a player. As a player. And JT, you were part of the bringing the word to him. Uh, I think in terms of the, the team itself, uh, surprising that a lot of guys at that time, which hadn't been spoken of, were uh, basically faith-based and really very dependent on Christ mm -hmm. during that era. Uh, that's one of the, the, uh, the causes and reasons we won four Super Bowls, but no one you know, really stated that. They say great coaches, great players, but we had a praying ball club. <laughs> yeah, so say that again, because I want everybody to hear that. You won four Super Bowls. Yeah. 
And but what you just said is part of the reason why. Yeah, like I say, we, we played together, we parted together, and we prayed together. <laughs> and you, when you get men doing that, uh, some strange things happen. Oh, you played, how long did you play here in Pittsburgh? I played for the Steelers, uh, well, nine years, and I spent the, my last year in Denver. And uh, from that prior to that, I was uh, from Florida State University. And I grew up in Macon, Georgia. I grew up in the tumultuous South, in the tumultuous 60s, doing that arena. So, uh, and uh, during that time, obviously, you needed Christ, and uh, <laughs> I was afraid to let him go. <laughs> well, I, I, you grew up in, a, in, in, in kind of a religious world, but you had the relationship with Jesus. It became true and real to you, and, and you've been following him for a long time. Yeah, I grew up in the civil rights movement, and as you know, that uh, really was uh, started in the church. So basically, as a young adolescent, uh, being in that in the, in the Macon, Georgia, Atlanta area, you know, you're familiar with Dr. King and that whole movement, so you're part of it. So, and it was church space. So obviously, your faith was very critical during those, even the Selma era, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the movie? See the movie, but that was the epitome of the South in most uh, most cities. What you saw in Selma. Uh, matter of fact, I did see it and brought tears because I was 14 when that happened, and uh, the following. When the church was bum in Alabama, we were afraid to go to church the following Sunday because that was, you know, was uh, one of the target things in the South was targeting churches, yes. Yeah, that was a horrible time. It was very horrible, yeah. Yeah, yes. horrible time. Well, Arthur, now you play now for the, for the uh, Steelers. Yes, I do. You're, where'd you come, how'd you get here? Oh, well, I played my first four years in the NFL with the Buffalo Bills. And then prior to that, when I was at college, I went to James Madison University. It's not, you're not a Florida State guy, but you know. I'm so <laughs> deep. But you went to Shenandoah Valley, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're living in the valley. That's, Very that, true. that's a, a good It's a beautiful thing. place, man. Beautiful place. So, yeah. And so you, you came here two years ago? Uh, no, year? this is my first year. I just uh, completed my first season here. Oh, you did? So, yeah. And it was a wonderful time for me, man. And like you said, just being able to connect with other men of God, you know, current teammates and, you know, former players and stuff like that, just being able to see like men, you know, people who have that same goal and that same desire to be more like Christ. I mean, it's just a great feeling. That's why I love it here. Well, how did you start in your journey with faith? Well, actually for me, both my parents were pastors. Uh, oh, my so mother still is a pastor. Oh. So I grew up in the church. Um, I'm a self-taught drummer, and, you know, growing up in the church, it was, hey, we need a drummer, you're going to play the drum. So, you know, I always had a love for it, and that was my, my first introduction to Christ. And, you know, like I guess I was saved as a young person, but I didn't really apply it to my everyday walk. It was just, hey, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I, I pray, you know. I know what to do. I read the Bible. But as I got older, especially through college and my first couple of years in the, in the pros, I understood that, you know, I'm, I'm given this platform being a professional athlete. I should display that. I should, you know, actively apply my faith in, you know, just think about all the lives that I could save by doing that, by being more transparent with myself, even though it makes you more vulnerable because, you know, you're in the microscope now. Sure. But that was my whole thing. And I just wanted to just, I guess, help people to understand that you need to have a relationship with God every day, not just when you have an event coming up. We call it game day faith, where you just pray on game day. You pray when you got a big test coming up. Right. I try to tell people that you got to do it every day. You know, I like that yeah. game day fit. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Right. I like that, yeah, man. That, 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 there's, there's the book. That's right. There's the book right there. Very true, man. Very well, true. I guess you learn, you know, that grace is free, but it ain't cheap. Right, you know, right about that, man. <laughs> grace is free, but it ain't cheap. Well, how, how about the praying? Are you, and I don't want to put any on the spot because you're, you're an active player, but are you seeing men in, uh, in the game right now that are expressing their faith? I definitely do. And, and I feel like, you know, with the change of times, it's becoming more, it's not necessarily a foreign thing to, to people anymore. I felt like when I was in college, if you want to get down and pray, it's kind of like, well, what are you doing? You know, whereas now, people are understanding of that, and most of them will want to join in with you because they don't want to miss out on something, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and as an athlete, you're always looking for that winning edge. So to a person who necessarily doesn't have that mm -hmm. great relationship with Christ, if they see me praying, they see Will Allen or, or Kelvin Beecham praying, well, they're going to want to join in. And then eventually, if that's their introduction, from then on, if they emulate what I do and they see how we, you know, how we carry ourselves, well, now that's going to, it's going to, uh, you know, have that mark on them. And then they're going to start becoming more Christ-like and things like that. And that's also what we're trying to do. We're trying to save lives. Well, when you, when you guys play, play you play when you played, mm -hmm. and you, your, faith was, your faith was out front. Mm -hmm. People knew where you stood. Mm -hmm. Did that impact the way you could play? Did, did, they, did that change the way you played the game at all? You know, I think one of the, the, the greatest things about coming to Christ is the freedom in knowing um, that he's in control. 
And so uh, for me, pressure, you know, the pressure of success and the fear of failure was so, so real. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so uh, the freedom to know that, you know, God has given us this gift. I think that's one of the great things about seeing these guys pray after games is they're, you know, they're, they're glorifying the gift giver. You know, I mean, that's, what's, that's what I think is beautiful. In, in an era when so many guys want to glorify the gift, yeah. 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 Uh, these guys are glorifying the gift giver. And for us on the out, when I was not a believer, watching these guys, you know, Jesus said, by this all men will know that you're my disciples, that you would love with. That was the draw. Uh, that was the draw. That's what, that's what made you uh, interested. Yeah. Uh, Bill, tell us about the event for men only. What, what, do you, what do you want to see done? Well, the reason we have the event is... Uh, for evangelism, to tell others about Christ. But the main thing is about the man. Now, I come from a family, I was the first man saved in my family in 1976, and from that point on, there was 34 uh, people in my family that saved just because God touched one man. Wow. So if we can reach one man with the gospel, you know, the statistics say that 95% of the time when you reach the man with the gospel, you got the whole family. Wow, yes. So that's why we do it. Yeah, the man has to come from the men. So who's invited? Who can come? All men. All men. <laughs> All men. You got to be a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just come, man. You know, just bring a buddy, bring a guy that's never heard the gospel. Let him get to hear these guys. I mean, yeah. it's powerful. It is. And, and, and there's music, there's speaking, there's food. It's, it, how, big, how long does the event last? Well, the tailgate's for two hours yeah. before the event. You go out and get hamburgers, hot dogs, french fries, and you come into the event at 1 o'clock, and it ends at 3. Oh. Well, I went last year, yeah. and I'm coming back this year, and I'm going to invite you to come. If you're, if you're a man, there's your qualification, then I want to invite you to come and be part of this. It's completely safe. No one's going to put you into the spotlight. They're not going to jerk you up on a stage and tell, you, tell us your testimony. But you're going to hear testimonies of lives that have been changed. If you're a wife or a mother and you want your son or your husband to take a step, positive step in life, then send them. We're going to put it on our website, how you can get tickets, how you can find out all about it. So go to ctvn.org and then you'll be able to connect. And I want to encourage you to do that because we have opportunities. You know, sometimes there's an opportunity and that opportunity comes and it goes. If we don't take advantage of the opportunity, we don't get the benefit. So get the benefit, plug in, and let's watch what God's going to do in this event. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you for, for having us. coming Thank and, and you, sharing with us the, uh, the beauty of God's work in your lives. You know, because we look up at the players and we go, wow, you know, <laughs> these are the players. But then we see these are men just like us, that, that love their families and love the Lord. We're so glad that you're coming to share. Thanks for being transparent. We'll be right back. Later on Real Life, the panel gathers to take on the tough issues by digging into the Word and answering your hard questions. Evangelist Regis Andrews invites his wife, Dr. Jody Andrews, to finish up the teachings on the Word for today. And coming up next, Pittsburgh Faith and Family Channel's General Manager Tom McGuff joins to talk about the success of the new channel and how you can get your church involved. That's next on Real Life. Hey, I'm Taylor. I'm Daniela. I'm Ambria. And, and we're, we're today's, today's girls. girls. Hey, who is that? Are you okay? Stupid people. The party's over, girls. What about you, huh? Watch us on Real Life. On Wednesdays. You don't want to miss an episode. On average, Cornerstone receives over 300 phone calls a day, 24-7. But have you ever wondered what happens to your prayer request after you hang up the phone? On Real Life, we pray for every call, whether it's mentioned on air or not. And we even pray for them during our weekly chapel. Then we lay hands on your request and anoint it with oil, believing for your miracle. As Jesus tells us in Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. If you need prayer at any time, call us. We would love to pray with you. Connect online with Cornerstone Network. Find us at facebook.com slash cornerstone TV and click the like button. You'll see show updates, exclusive videos, inspiring scripture, and lots of behind-the-scenes photos. 
If you have a question or a comment, post it on our page. We want to hear from you. Connect online with Cornerstone at facebook.com slash cornerstone TV. Is this your first time watching Cornerstone Network? Welcome. We are honored that you are watching us, the Good News Station. New friends, we want to give you a special free gift. You'll receive our founder, Russ Bixler's book, Faith Works, the incredible story of how CTVN was created through faith. You'll also receive our real-life newsletter, pack the schedule information, viewer testimonies, and behind-the-scenes stories. Call us and let us get to know you. Wasn't Terry cute on that last? She was so cute. <laughs> cute little Gorgeous, spokesper beautiful. spokesperson. Beautiful. She'll get mad at me for saying that. Beautiful. Last year, Cornerstone Network launched something that we're very, very proud of, and it's brand new. Yay. And we want you to know about it. If you don't already know about it, the vision for this new channel was to be a blessing to the local church here in the Pittsburgh area. Yes. Tom McGuff has been with Cornerstone for a long time. He's been part of the yes. team. He's now taking this on to his added responsibilities as the general manager of this channel. He's here to talk to us about what God's doing. Here's the title with Pittsburgh Faith and Family Channel. Tom, thank you for Yay. coming. Give, God give us a good thank you. Thank so you so nice. much. And Dawn, thank you. I, I have to begin by saying this was really your vision. This is what God laid on your heart. And in the very first conversation that we had about this, you said to me that all of the prophecy around the world, mm -hmm. that there is going to be revival in our land, in this great nation, mm -hmm. and it's going to emanate from Pittsburgh. Yes. And so from right. that, from that, the seed that God planted in your heart, this uh, wonderful new channel, and I got to tell you, it is the best watch on TV. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm partial, <laughs> but just all of these local churches and yeah. Amy, uh, yeah. Grace Life Church, yeah. what a blessing to be a part of that lineup. Yes. Well, tell people about the channel. Yes, and absolutely. What's we're, it about? It, we're, it's the Pittsburgh Faith and Family Channel, and um, God has developed a wonderful lineup beautiful lineup of local Christ-centered, spirit-filled ministries. And the pin that I, that I wear is yeah. the, the crown of thorns. Yeah. And it's because it is, as the Apostle Paul said, preaching Christ and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're going yeah. to hear messages right. of Christ and Him crucified from all of these wonderful local churches, mm -hmm. urban, suburban, rural, yeah. from all four corners of Western Pennsylvania, yeah. this, this whole greater Pittsburgh market. And we're just so grateful for that. Now it's channel 40.2. So if you get your signal over the air, if you watch television with an over the air signal, we're digital channel 40.2. If you're a cable subscriber or we're in the process, we have good uh, relationships now that we're building and developing with the cable systems. Armstrong Cable is one of the first to take us. Bentleyville yeah. Telephone Company, another. And, and some of the other ones, Comcast is the big player in this market. And uh, we've had good conversation, good dialogue, and we're moving forward with them. So awesome. we, we want wanted to build the lineup. God was very specific in developing the lineup, mm -hmm. essentially building the boat mm -hmm. before we'd conduct the cruises. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we also have a Roku channel for yes. that, and we stream online. That, that's right. So, it's so a you can live watch stream. it at www.ctvn.org slash PFF. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Roku, this is such a blessing. Uh, Linda King uh, gave me numbers just for our first partial month. And they were fabulous, off yeah. of the charts, much more than what I would have ever anticipated. And, and praise God, people are watching this. And we had one viewer, Betty Lynn, and uh, her and her husband and their family now live in Denver. They, they lived in Pittsburgh, and uh, they moved to Denver in 2013. Mm -hmm. But they are now watching Pittsburgh Faith and Family on Roku, praise go. God. Wow. And, and she was so excited, and she has so capitalized. We are so excited because their church, South Hills Assembly, mm -hmm. Pastor Jack and Kay Step, yep. uh, that's who they saw on Roku. Aww. So praise God. Well, Tom, what, what this birthed in my heart is that Cornerstone didn't have any local programming because we go to all over the, the right, nation. Right. And now all over, going to soon to be in different parts of the world. Yes. So okay. Pittsburgh Faith and Family was birthed with the idea that we want to bring the local church. So many people watch television 
but don't have a home church. Mm -hmm. That's right. They don't work. I saw, I've seen statistics up to 70% don't have a home church. So you can't grow in your faith unless mm -hmm. you're in relationship. Right. You can't do it on your own. You need to be in relationships. You need to find a church. But how do you find a church? So what we, what we did with this channel was say this, let's give people the opportunity to engage with the church service exactly. and let them I don't want to say sample, that's what? the wrong word, yeah, but, sure. but to see how yeah. that church worships. Exactly. Yeah. And the exciting part, and this is Tom, to Tom's great credit and God's using him, we have churches across all the spectrum of the gospel. Mm. We have Catholic yeah. churches. That's right. We have, well, Orthodox. you tell us, you tell Orthodox. us. Orthodox, denominational yeah. churches, non-denominational churches. Yeah. From every different geography, we have small little rural churches. We have big cathedral urban churches. Mm. We have across every band, but with the one common thread of preaching Christ and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. That's really, uh, God has been very specific. Each of these churches that I, uh, I'm directed to go out after uh, all have that common thread running mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. that it is Christ-centered, Spirit-filled, and preaching Christ and Him crucified, as the Apostle Paul it said. It has to be cool for you behind the scenes to watch all of the shows oh. and how they <laughs> tie together. And Absolutely. I bet, if I'm not mistaken, that the Spirit, when He speaks, it's it's going to all of the churches. It is. Like, it's there. It's congruent. It's not, you know, segregated That's exactly at all. right. It's a team. It, it's no surprise. I was a ball player, yeah. a baseball player. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the men that were on here before, which, by the way, it, the, the Four Men Only event is just extraordinary. Yeah. It really, truly is. Is. Um, but but I was a baseball player, so I think in baseball metaphors. I yeah. still do. Forty yeah. years after the fact, yeah. I still think in baseball metaphors. But essentially, I feel like an old time scout. Mm. Those guys that used to scour the sand lots and they'd cool. find. Boy, I like how I like that, that boy throws the ball. Boy, you see that guy run, mm -hmm. and and that's what I get to do is go out and and to to worship in churches, and God will direct me to say that's a church that's that needs awesome. to take that message out beyond their four that's walls. Well, Tom, when we first talked about this vision, I challenged you. I said, how many churches do you think <laughs> could put a television program together? Because it's not an easy. It's not yeah. an easy. No, it is. No, it is. And he and you said, I think you said, twelve or fourteen. Or Absolutely. Some, some number. It was, and I said, well, we need at least twenty to to make it work. <laughs> and, and Tom said, to his great credit, he said, well, let me go look around, see what I could. And you, you took about three, four months, kind well, of dig, digging around, and and he came back. He said, I think we could get twenty. You make a very good point. <laughs> Probably, t we're, we're going to be going from 120 hours of churches. Mm -hmm. By Easter, we'll be 150 hours in wow. a week. That's there are only 168 awesome. hours in the week. So our inventory is full yes. now of local churches. Wow. And the surprising thing about this to me is that a year ago, probably two-thirds or more of these churches were not doing a video of their service. Mm -hmm. oh. so, wow. so, so this has yeah. created wow. that. That's that good. was an accurate read. A year ago, when I was coming back and saying, Don, there, there are like five, six, seven churches out there that are currently doing a video that I, I'm, I'm contacting. That was an accurate read, but it just goes to show it's not what we're doing, it's what yeah. Christ has already done. And that's why churches catch a hold of this vision and they say, well, what do we have to do? And yeah. church after church after church have plugged in, they, they've gotten the cameras, they're doing the video mm -hmm. now in order to take advantage of this now opportunity. How many, how many churches are on, on our we'll, we'll be going to 50 by Easter. Wow. 50 wow. by Easter. Yeah. Awesome. Did you see that, folks? That's God's hand at it's work. Sure. It's only and, God's hand. And we don't charge the church. Our partners, I want you to know this, we're not charging the church for the time to be on TV. Awesome. Because that would be counterproductive to them being able to do it. Churches That's don't right. have that budget set aside. We just ask them to help us with a love offering on a, from, a time to, from time to time. But we don't, we don't charge for the time. So that's a, what, a, what a blessing. And you know, as we bless the church, Pastor, say amen to this. Yes. As we bless, yes. bless the church, God will bless us. Tom, you're doing a fantastic Praise job. God. Thank you, Don. No, he's Thank knocking you. the ball out of the park on this one. Oh, oh I like that. Faith and I like that. Family <laughs> Channel. That's right. Keep up the good work. That's Thank right. You. Thank you. But now it's time for today's Bible study. Our teacher this week has been evangelist Regis Andrews, but today we will be blessed by his wife, Dr. Jody, as she shares her teaching called Jesus Removes Scar Tissue. And she begins her teaching now on the word for today. Good morning. You've seen my husband earlier on Word for Today, but I have a word. Let's turn in our Bibles to John chapter 11. 
Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Let's skip down. Verse 6, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in that same place where he was. Then after that, he saith to his disciples, let's go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late thought, sought to stone thee, and goest thou there thither again? And Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. You know, it's so ex exciting for me to be able to see Jesus awaken things that are asleep or things that are dead in our lives. When I was a little girl, I stuck my finger in a car door and the tip of my finger developed scar tissue. Now, you could cut the end of my finger off and I wouldn't feel it. There's no feeling where that scar tissue is. You could pierce it with a needle and I wouldn't feel it because of the scar tissue. You see, in our lives, we have scar tissue. As my husband taught earlier on releasing unforgiveness, when we don't have unforgiveness, when we don't have bitterness, when we've released that person 70 times 7, sometimes there's scar tissue that remains in our heart. But Jesus shows up to remove that scar tissue for his glory. And it may seem like it takes a little bit longer, but when he shows up, he removes the scar tissue and Jesus gets all the glory. Let's continue on with the scripture. It's interesting how the two sisters respond to Jesus. Jesus shows up. Then Martha, verse 20, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary still sat at the house. Then Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I'm here to tell you today that though there is something dead in your life, Jesus will bring it back to life. Maybe it's the death of a relationship. Maybe it's an abortion. Maybe you gave your children away for adoption and that thing has been dead in you and it's left scar tissue and you have been unfeeling and you haven't been able to respond in the way that God intends you to respond. Jesus is saying that he has come to give you life and life more abundantly. Let's continue on with the scripture. And when she had said so, she went her way, verse 28, and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The master is come, and he calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Verse 32, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, she saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and he was troubled. Let's go down to verse 45. 
Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. When we believe that Jesus can resurrect from the dead anything that has been lost or buried in our lives because of scar tissue, he comes and immediately he releases it. We're set free. We can feel, we can live, and we can love. And many will believe on him. That's your word for today. Being a mom is the hardest job I've ever loved, and I'm just so grateful to be able to journey with my friends here at Mom Talk. From silly moments and fun, to heart to heart talks, from encouragement and wisdom, to practical daily advice, we're all here for you. We yes. put the real in real life. Ooh. That's right. So join us and our families every Monday. We'll see you then. Bye. 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 Do you love hearing God's word on real life every day? Well, we have exciting news. Now you can get Don Black's new devotional, God's Word for Real Life, emailed to you every day. This free daily devotional email is ready for you on your desktop, tablet, or smartphone, so you can access God's Word anywhere. Go to ctvn.org devo to start your free subscription today. God will get your attention. He knows how to do that. God wants us to build a television station. Isn't that exciting? He didn't think it was exciting at all. God intervened in Russ Bixler's heart, and the two of them started to work. He said, I want you to get some ladies that know how to pray and pray the station on the air. Almost 10 years later, on Easter Sunday, the vision became a reality. Pittsburgh's first Christian television station went on the air. We are the good news station. And we care about people, and we trust the Lord. But if we don't tell people about Jesus and why He came and what He did, how are their lives going to be any different? I believe that Cornerstone Television is needed more than it's ever been needed. And I'm thankful to those that have supported us and for God for helping us. It's that time again, time for our panel to face some very tough questions and to tackle some issues of life. On my panel today yes. with me today, yes, and today Yay. twice, is our co-host Amy <laughs> Schaefer, co-pastor of Grace Life Church in Monroeville, Dr. William Glaze. Amen. The main man from Bethany Amen. Baptist Church. We're right. so glad that you're here in Pittsburgh. Favorite part. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wish I had that voice. I know. It'd be true. Ray Langford, pastor of Oasis, <laughs> yes, ministry in Pittsburgh. Welcome. Bless you. We're so glad you're here. And uh, our, our great knower of all knows, as I like to call him, <laughs> Chuck Hammy. He looks like Einstein today. He's got a little Einstein vibe going on there. We might call on that. Very there wise you go. and astute. We're, we're, and we're glad that you're here with us too. And if you have a hard question that you want to put before the panel, we can do. You can do that online, or you can call the the number that's on the screen and say, "Hey, I got a hard question for these guys. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love we'd love for you to send us an email at family at ctvn.org and say, "Here's a question," and send send it in. Maybe you don't have an opportunity to talk directly with a pastor. I got them all around me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, today's hard question is a video that's brought to us from Vince. Vince, what is your hard question? My name is Vince Burens, and I work for the CCO, and my hard question is a question that we get asked by many college students, which is, if not all of the Bible should be, uh, if not all the Bible should be read literally, how can we trust any of it to be read literally, and what pieces should we read literally, and what pieces should we not read literally? Well, Vince, that's a very, very timely question because we're in an age where we seem to want to take the Bible apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Literally means that we take it all. all. We believe it all. Or we, the other option is to selectively choose what we think is right and what we don't. And we see that all the time. Doc, Dr. Glaze, how, how do you answer that? Well, you know, the Bible is written in different genres. And, you know, there's uh, poetry, there's prophecy, mm -hmm. there's... Uh, 
apop apocalyptic literature, which is symbolic. There's narrative, which is actually actually historical uh, e record of his historical events. So it's written in all kind of genres. So you have to understand that genre and interpret the Bible according to that. You know, you can't like take a something that's meant to be symbolic and take it out and try to interpret it literally. You know, you have to understand that that's, that's symbolism right there and it represents something. So we can trust all the Bible, we just need to understand the genre and as we understand that, then we can trust all of it. Now that sounds complicated to me. That sounds like you gotta do a lot of studying. You gotta, you well, gotta get in there. Well, you know, there, there's a uh, study that's called hermeneutics and it's called the science of interpreting uh, and reading the Bible. And so I would recommend that every Christian take a course in hermeneutics. Hermeneutics? Yeah. Now, you know, that's a big, that's a big 50 that's cent ugly word. word. Yeah, it, it, it is an ugly word. Good... But, but basically well, but all it means, <laughs> yeah, but, but basically. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hermeneutics, little boy. Herman. We apologize <laughs> right. to the right. Hermans right. out there. Right, but, but basically all it means is just studying the Bible in its context. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. Right. very simple. That's what it I means. I was thinking but, as you were talking, just the, the people that are baby believers that mm -hmm. have no idea. And I just say, just open it, go, Go, go to John or to Proverbs and start simple and just start feeding on it and getting it mm -hmm. in you because it's living and active and whether you know if it's symbolic or you know literal or narrative you'll you'll it it's going in you and it will change yeah. and get working in you and the interesting thing is that there are lessons in every genre yes right and and it's the the lessons of the Bible I am one who believes that this is the Word of God. Yeah. It is inspired. Amen. And even the Psalms that are poetic and, and they have beautiful poetic language in it, but it is so inspiring to my spirit. Yes. Uh, this is a book that's not simply intellectually discerned. It is spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit who penned it through men of old, mm -hmm. interprets it through our lives mm -hmm. so that it becomes living, yes. powerful, right. sharper than any two-edged yes. sword, right. piercing, piercing. Yes. Yeah. to the dividing asunder of joints, moral soul, spirit, mm -hmm. right. a discerner of the thoughts. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Word of God is not like any other literal work. Uh, it is a living right. Word. That's right. right. And the truths and the lessons that are in here Amen. with applicable truth will change your entire life. Yep. So that's the difference between just reading the Word of God rather than studying and actually the applicable truths that will turn someone who couldn't put down a crack pipe to deliver their life, Amen. who right. couldn't right. walk away from certain Amen. sins and, and bondages, mm -hmm. but the truths of the Word of God applied to a life mm -hmm. changes us completely. Amen. Right. That's the difference between this and Shakespeare. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. Right. Well, you know, I, I heard somebody say the Bible must have been inspired of God and not of men. I would not if I could believe a good man wrote it to deceive, and a bad man would not if he could proceed to write a book so good. <laughs> so it must be that God inspired words that souls of prophets fired. Very Yay! Yay! Thank you. That was Excellent that was stuff. very poetic. Yeah. <laughs> very poetry. That's poetry, right? That's right. That was the most literally amazing poetry I've That's heard. Right. Well, we live in an age where we're going to have to we'll be challenged by mm -hmm. young college students that are getting right. all right. kind of information. And they really want to say that this, this book is just uh, basically a parable, a mm -hmm. fairy tale right. uh, filled with fables. Mm -hmm. But those of us who know that these applicable truths have changed our entire Amen. life yeah. and destiny. Right. Thank God for the Spirit of God who Amen. penned it. One Amen. of my Bible school teachers said, it, it, when you're digging into the Word of God as you're reading it and feeding on it, the, the, it's like the more you learn and know, the less you realize you've known and exactly. learned. So it's like the, the digging of the Word of God is endless and mm -hmm. limitless, and we could never dig deep enough into Amen. the depths my, of my. His character, His love, His goodness, my. and His faithfulness. Paul uses a term called the manifold wisdom of God. Yeah. And that's what's shown here. Right. And the manifold wisdom of God is like every page you turn, there's a new yeah. revelation. I don't care if you've read that page a thousand times. Right. That's right. You never, that's right. you never mm, get 
to the end of it. Yep. Because Amen. that's our God. Amen. And there's always a fresh word. That's right. And, and, every and, day. And you know, going back to Vince's question, how can we trust it? Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 mm -hmm. says all scripture is God breathed. God breathed. You know, it right. comes from the very breath, breath of, God. of God. And when he yeah. gave it, he gave it without error and right. he gave it, you know, totally inspired. So, you know, that's how we can trust it because it is God breathed that's right. and he, he gave it without error. Amen. And because I don't understand it doesn't make it not real. Right. Right. Because right. I got to tell you, God's so big. Hey, I haven't even started to understand well, all of it. If any of us could ever get to the place where we claim a total understanding of the Word of God, we are fo Trouble. only fooling ourselves <laughs> right. because that's an impossibility. Yes, we don't right. have the capacity yes, in our own intellectual uh, uh, powers to understand it in, in anywhere near its level. Mm -hmm. right. That's what makes the Word of God alive mm -hmm. is because it is a living Holy Spirit breathed yeah. and he, he germinated it through the hearts of men and women and, and then God will germinate it in your heart, in my heart, as we study it and as we read it. Right. It comes alive. As it, and as it comes alive, it's relevant. Mm -hmm. How can a book that's been written for thousands of years <laughs> be relevant to you? That's good. If, yeah. if you, you, you've got to get into the Word. Now, what's the, let me just encourage you with this. What the devil wants to do, the number one thing he wants to do in your life is he wants to steal God's Word from you. That's yes. right. That's if, right. If, if you want to be successful <laughs> in your life, no matter where you are, if you want to take that next step of success, you've got to find it in His Word. Amen. Amen. Get into His Amen. Word. Make it simple. You don't, you don't have to understand the Greek or the Aramaic or the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is read it with your heart wide open to God. And when you do that, praise God, He changes everything. Just My take goodness. a 21-day challenge with me. Read the yes. Scripture for yeah. the next 21 Amen. days. Amen. Read it right. every day. Just read one chapter. Start in the book of John, just, mm -hmm. just like Amy said. Read John one chapter a day for the next 21 days, and let's see what God does inside your mind. Amen. He's yeah. going to change your mind. That's what you got to do, renew your mind. Well, we're going to come back in a moment. We're going to pray for those who have called in for prayer, and we, we want to stand with you in faith, believing for God's hand to yes. be extended in your life. Amen. But before we do that, let's see what's on tomorrow's Real Life. Friday on Real Life. It's our special weekly Signs and Wonders program with Pastor Gary Mitrick bringing a special message of hope from God's Word. The team prays for God to provide the miracle that you've been waiting for. And Pastor Myra Bell takes us into the presence of the Lord with anointed praise and worship. That's Friday on Real Life. We're back here with the A-Team to pray. Hallelujah. Yeah. And put our faith out with yours as you've asked for us to do and to stand in agreement that something's going to change in your life. Praise God. And I want to, I want to share, and I'm so privileged to share testimonies with you. A testimony is a story of a life that God has touched in a way, and they call us back and they say, we want to share what God's done. And I want to encourage you. If God's t done something in your life, and I know he has in many, 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 many thousands of you, we want to hear your testimony. Amen. We want you Amen. to do, why don't you call us back or send an email to us at family at ctvn.org and say, this is what God's doing. Be grateful and, and praise him for what he praise. does in your life. Just Amen. like Caroline called to uh, us, she called in last week asking for a prayer for a job. Today, out of the blue quote unquote, right. she received a call for an interview for an application that she submitted months yeah. ago, months ago. God is ahead of you, yeah. Caroline. Yeah. He's ahead of you. Just walk out his, in, his, in his blessings. Cindy called and uh, she called in to, and spoke with one of her prayer partners and she prayed that the pipes in her house would not freeze. Boy, now that's a prayer request. In this, in this, in this day, brother, in this 15 below zero kind of weather, it would not freeze. She talked, she called today and thank, to thank God that her pipes did not freeze. That's awesome. I mean, she's thankful. You might think that's pretty, that's pretty uh, uh, trivial. little, trivial, but boy, it's not. No, no it's not. And here's what, here, here's what Cindy, Cindy, you're, you're a wise woman that you put prayer to this. Yes. You just didn't hope. You put prayer to it. So praise her. Right. Pastor, what, what, what prayer request do you have? Well, we have uh, Lee Doris, whose daughter is driving uh, back to Pittsburgh from Texas, and she wants uh, to pray for traveling mercies. Yeah. Okay. 
Rose is, is praying relationship, uh, a love gone cold in, in, in their marriage, her marriage. And uh, so we just, just pray for Rose. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have uh, Elaine. She's uh, asking for healing in her body from pain. And then I also have uh, Richard and his fiance, Nicole. And they're just praying for guidance and wisdom with uh, their finance and getting married. Boy, that's big, big deal. Brother. And I have Lois. Her son and niece have autism. And we know God is a healer. And I also have Donna, who has an earache. And also we know God can heal that earache. I got Michael, and he's praying for his son's salvation and his girlfriend's salvation, who uh, they're not married and they're living together. And uh, Lord, we just pray that uh, you'd be like the hounds of heaven. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. 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 I have Charles and praying for his baby. It's nothing like when your baby is sick. Mm -hmm. And that baby would be healed. And Sharon is praying for her Aunt Doris for full recovery after her operation mm -hmm. and for her salvation. Lord, Lord use this her. situation to yes. save her to in Jesus' name. Yes. We have Chuck, and Chuck is praying for the upcoming uh, men's outreach ministry, mm -hmm. and he's praying that uh, God's will be done. Good, yeah. you're good. Oh, yeah. It's good, Chuck. That's Amen, right. brother. Speaking of Chuck. Gary is praying for his son, Jonathan, who's taking a test today for a job. He's taking a test for a job. A job. Well, let's shuffle these things in here, guys, and let's, let's and gals, yeah. guys, gals, guys, yeah. and let's mix our faith together. Stretch your That's hand right. from home yeah. and join with us in faith. Father, you know yes. every Thank one of these God. needs, every one of these people personally, God, mm -hmm. your love is extended to them, the Thank mighty you. hand of God. You, Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Send Hallelujah. out your spirit, send out yes. your word, Amen. and heal them, yes. Father, yes. and yes. deliver yes. them, Father, oh, and restore them, yes. Father. Yes. Set this yes. marriage back on its right yes. feet, yes. Father yes. God, we pray in Jesus' name. Lord. Lord, we thank you for every healing, every provision, every one of your gifts of the Spirit. Lord, I pray that you will lead these these folks in your spirit to the next yes. level in their life, Father, that they will be stretched and they'll get in your word. Yes. And in your word, Lord, you'll meet them there with supernatural revelation yes. and truth. And Lord, when they know the truth, the truth will set them free. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're so glad, guys. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to reconvene this panel again. We're glad you're with us. See us next uh, tomorrow on Real Life.